Today I want to talk about WinUAE and floppy disks. A lot of you will have seen the video produced by Neil at RMC showing how a real floppy drive can be used with WinUAE. Today I want to show you how this is now being integrated into the official build. We'll start by looking at WinUAE 4.9 Beta 38. To enable real floppy drive support, you first need to download the plugins from my website. Once downloaded, you need to install them into your plugins folder in your WinUAE folder. Now if we go to the floppy drive section in WinUAE, it all looks the same. However, if I click on one of the drop downs, you'll see that there's this new option, configure floppy bridge. From here, you can set up different profiles for how to access these floppy drives. I'm going to start by creating a very basic profile for a drawbridge board. I'm going to leave all the settings on default for now, but I'll come back to them later and explain what they all do. Now I'll assign that profile against DF0 and we'll start the emulator. I'm going to start with my workbench disk that I used to use on my Amiga years ago. And as you can see it's booting perfectly fine. I can even go into the disk and have a look what's on it. In WinUAE you can make a virtual hard disk point to a location on your real hard disk. This makes copying files off floppy disks really, really easy. So now I'm going to try something a little more tricky, a disk with copy protection. And I'm going to start with probably the most hated game ever, Captain Planet. And as you can see, there's been absolutely no problems with that loading. Great, let's try what's probably my favourite game of all time, Lemmings. No problem, that loaded perfectly. Now that you've seen the basics, I'm going to show you something a little more crazy. No, this isn't my version of the Floppytron. This is just four floppy disks stacked on top of each other, all ready to connect to the emulator. So let's get them configured. So I'm going to head into floppy drives and click configure floppy bridge. So I'm going to start at the top of the pile. The top drive is actually connected to a grease weasel board. I'm going to manually select the COM port. And I'm going to leave the rest of the options on default, with the exception of the last option, because my drive is connected as if it was on drive B. The black drive below the Grease Weasel drive is a slimline drive containing one of my drawbridge boards. Again with this one, I'm going to leave all the options on default, with the exception of the COM port. The white drive below that one is the very first slimline drive I converted. This one has an Arduino Pro Mini in the back, sanded down to fit. Again, with the exception of the COM port, I will leave all the other options as default. And finally we come to the big green drive at the bottom. This is the drive I started with back in 2017. This has an Arduino Nano connected to an FTDI breakout board. Once again, with the exception of the COM port, I will leave all the other options as default. Now all the profiles are set up, we can go about assigning the profiles to each of the drives. We'll go in reverse order, starting with the green drive being DF0. You'll notice that each time I select one of these, the drive temporarily spins up. That's the emulator just checking to see if the drive's working. And as I work my way down the drives and assign them all, we are ready to start the emulator. So the emulated Amiga looks fairly happy. It thinks there's four drives connected. Four drives can be useful for games that require multiple disks and it makes it so much easier than constantly swapping. Let's put a disk in and see it working. So I'm gonna use my trusty workbench disk again and I'm going to show you this craziness working by inserting three more disks simultaneously. So we've got a copy of High Speed Pascal, a copy of Deluxe Paint, and a public domain disk labelled 17-bit software. Let's see which disk gets detected first. Ah, 
Ah, high speed Pascal. I used to use this for my GCSEs and A-levels. Now deluxe paint. And then finally the public domain disc. And again, there's no problem opening these. So I now want to briefly tell you about some of the other options that we haven't looked at. The first is the mode, and this controls how the disc being read is sent to the emulator. Most of the time, normal will be perfectly fine, but more compatible might be required by some games. If you're working primarily in Workbench only, I recommend Turbo, as the access will be much faster. The last option you should try and avoid, as it has an unpleasant side effect of freezing the emulator while disc access occurs. Directly below this option is Smart Speed. Smart Speed will automatically toggle between Normal and Turbo mode whilst trying to preserve copy protection. Below this is Auto Cache. Auto Cache will continue to read the rest of the disk while the operating system is not using it. This can help speed up access later. Finally, there's an option to choose between Automatic, Double Density and High Density support. This option is here primarily just in case you have a disk that fails to be detected correctly. PC floppy drives have no way to tell you whether the disk inserted is double density or high density. So when a disk is inserted, we have to look at the data and guess. If you're only ever using double density disks, I recommend selecting this option, as disks will be detected a little faster. So I wanted to show you just how far this project has come. I'm going to start by showing you a demo that was created and entered into a competition. The competition was a yearly event ran in Denmark every year called The Party. It's where lots of people got together and showed off what they were capable of doing. In 1992, a group called Spaceballs entered a demo called State of the Art. So I've configured WinUAA slightly differently. This time I've configured Floppy Bridge into Turbo mode. This means it will try and push the data as fast as possible, which for this demo is really needed. So we'll start the emulator and you'll see it'll boot into Kickstart 1.3. And now we'll insert the disk. And you can see the demo starts straight away. I was always impressed by how quickly it kicked off. You'll also notice that whilst the disk access is happening, the animation still remains smooth. Now on a real Amiga at this point, the demo's already ready for the next stage and has loaded all the data, but we're still a little bit slower. But the nice thing is, the demo still works perfectly fine. If you've enjoyed this video, consider clicking the like button below. Also consider supporting me on Patreon. Your support on Patreon allows me to continue to producing videos like this and a load of others that I will produce about things like the Arduino and software and programming. Your support also helps me to continue working on projects like this Floppy Bridge project.